Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. I worked ahead of schedule, but I guess I don't work for you anymore. This is a story one of my coworkers told me while we were chatting in the lab. He's a recent hire after getting laid off from one of the big three car companies an unfortunately very common history for someone to have in my area. However, he was cheered up immensely because of how badly they'd screwed themselves by letting him go. He told me how the company had him specialize in a very technical software project, being the only guy who knew how to use the requisite tools and being the de facto expert on how the code was structured and how it worked. No one else felt the need to get up to speed or brush up on it because he handled it all. He had so much free time, being put on no other assignments, that he ended up working way ahead of schedule and finishing not only the software, but the security audits, reports, and all sorts of documentation that would have been necessary once the project was finalized. He kept these pre-produced deliverables on his personal directory so that he could have them ready in a flash when the company asked for them. I'm sure you see where this is going. Well, a car company's favorite pastime is layoffs, and they decided he was no longer necessary in Candom. In retrospect, their unwillingness to get him started on any other project was a red flag. Knowing exactly what kind of hot water they'd be in without him, he'd happily deactivated his employee account and subsequently deleted everything on his personal drive. The remaining project team members rapidly discovered how screwed they were when they tried to provide a status on his software and realized none of them knew anything about how it worked, how finished it was, or how to continue working on it. No one had bothered to have it explained while he was still there. One of his buddies on the team called him up a few days later, begging him to help out and just let him have the files he'd completed ahead of time. My coworker felt conflicted because he had no real grudge against the employees who were stuck in this situation, but obviously no one had those files anymore since he was no longer an employee. He basically told his friend that the company had dug its own grave and he couldn't help in any way besides giving him some tips off the top of his head from what he remembered. I told him, that's when you call back and give them your quote for freelance work. That's when you tell Buddy to tell his supervisor that you'd be more than happy to go back and fix their problems as a contract employee with a $1,000 cash incentive and $100 an hour. And our next story. Officer gets a taste of his own medicine and then some. Bit of a backstory. My wife inherited a house and land and begged me to move there. We put our house up for sale and moved there sight unseen while I'm used to and even fond of it now, this place was the land that time forgot, literally horse and buggy country, and it quickly became clear that for a while she'd have to be sole income while I brought our new property into the modern era. The house literally had no plumbing. There was an outhouse and a manual well pump outside. We decided to buy a used house trailer, place it on the southernmost part of the property and live in it while I worked on the house. After some time getting everything updated, we came in way under budget since I decided to learn the skills and do all the work myself. Seeing a need of my community, I used the leftover money we had and I bought land in BFE deemed unfit for development at a steel. Soil lead levels were too high for housing slash farming and too remote for commercial. And after getting permits slash certifications and almost a year of doing all the building and earthworks myself while working a part-time hospital security job a county over, I started a security self slash home defense and firearms training company. Somehow, without meaning to, I managed to wedge myself into a unique position where I not only trained everyday people, but I got certified to be the guy that all police agencies in the region send their officers to for state recertification and further training. Now on to the story. I was doing an armed guard gig during a night shift. Police car spotted me on perimeter check and pulled into the lot to see who I was. I wasn't wearing a uniform. After figuring out it was me, they decided to sit and BS for a bit. While talking with these officers, I listened to them share about a new hire who transferred from a larger city, and they just know it's going to cause trouble with the locals. They mentioned how he has that I know better than you attitude and thinks that the piece of metal on his chest means that he is the law. Apparently, he speaks aggressively to anyone who dare interact with him if they aren't a police officer, and overall just acts like a power-tripping douche nozzle. I like that people here will just come up and talk to me. It's the main reason I stayed here. 
We brainstorm for a while about how to get through to Officer Douche and make him change his ways or career, but eventually came up with nothing legal and had to go back to doing our respective jobs like adults. Two weeks or so after having this chat and hearing similar things from other officers I know, I get my first interaction with Officer Douche. On my way to speak with a prospective client about a consultation for their home defense plan, this A-hat pulled me over for waving at him when we passed each other on a two-lane highway. The Sea Goblin wrote me a citation for reckless operation of a vehicle, stating that he was justified in doing so because he saw me remove my hand from the wheel. Trying to be diplomatic, I just figured that you would appreciate a friendly gesture from someone today. I know I like it when somebody gives me a friendly wave. This absolute insult to humanity blows his effing gasket, gets in my face yelling at me and threatening to haul my smart butt downtown and see how friendly I am when I'm hooked up in the back of his car. I decided that the officers I talked to were definitely not exaggerating and this D was going to end up getting himself or someone else killed or hurt. Feeling as though there was nothing more I could do, I went about my business as usual the next couple days. Then guess who comes through my door to schedule me for their recertification? Q Pro Revenge Mode. We sat down to get his paperwork started. The whole time we're doing this, he's bragging and talking about how good a shot he is and that he looks forward to the day when someone wants to F around and find out with him. After getting all the paperwork sorted and scheduled at a time and date, he asked if he could use my range to get some practice shots in. I even waved my range feet just to see this POS shoot. After seeing the 13-year-old girl a few lanes down from him load up and absolutely drill headshots at 15 yards with my range master instructing her, he made some excuse about needing his sights adjusted, then packed up, and the brainless sea nugget left thinking we were all buddy-buddy a few minutes later. See, the policy around here is that the county pays for your first test, and if an officer fails to recertify, then they either choose two weeks unpaid leave or sit at the office and do paperwork at reduced pay for two weeks, then they have to pay out of pocket and try again. After that second failure, the officer's job lies entirely in the hands of their boss. I decided the moment he signed the papers that there would be no mercy for this D-nozzle. My mind was made up that since I couldn't get this guy off the force completely, I would go by the book and at least get him off of any that were close to the people around me and he'd have to perform like an absolute pro to avoid it. The day finally comes where he's to test and he shows up wearing shorts and a tap out t-shirt with only his gun and duty belt emptied of everything else. No vest, no range bag, no radio, no eye or ear protection, no cuffs, OC spray, or taser. Not a damn thing that he knew he was supposed to have. After getting all this sorted and noting all this in his chart, I let him take his test, and damn it am I glad that I did. He failed the first test immediately due to sheer ineptitude. When the buzzer sounded, he first tripped over his own feet and ate the ground face first. Full scorpion. For the first time ever for me, someone had failed the first test on all three metrics. After listening to him try and make excuses, complain, demand, then beg me to give him another chance, I told him that I couldn't and he failed, that my report was getting sent in, and that he'd have to talk to his training officer and we could go from there. He exploded in anger while slamming his fist into my wall and telling me that he was going to make sure you all regret this while pointing at me and my staff in the other room. By now, a couple of my regulars, my range master and the local brass goblin, have all made it over to watch through the window and listen to the exchange, knowing I have him on camera with audio punching a hole in my wall, and I have witnesses. A new thought came to me when I heard him say this, and I decided to steer him just the way I wanted him to go. All I had to do was ask if what he said was a threat, and the dip crap responded with, you bet your effing butt it is, and to my surprise, reached out to give me a shove. I sidestepped him and he stumbled past, which pissed him off even further. I told him then and there to get the F off my property and that he wasn't welcome back. I looked this sack of crap straight in the eye and informed him that he just sealed his fate since he'd now have to beg to be sent to the other facility and I'd make certain my report recommended he never work as an officer again. He then decided to spit at me and swing a punch this time. Not one to miss an opportunity, an easy outweighing him by 50 to 60 pounds, I raised my guard and the moment his arms made contact with mine, I used his momentum and my muscle to send him over my shoulder and directly into the ground. Apparently my range master had been watching everything from his office on the security feed 
And when Officer Douche started punching my walls, my boy immediately picked up the phone and called the sheriff, grabbing the shotgun on his way out the door to us. When all was said and done, I got to watch him get hauled off my property by his boss in cuffs and read his rights since, yes, I will be pressing charges. He assaulted me, threatened me and my employees, and damaged my property. And I had all the evidence I need to prove it. Despite all the evidence and testimony against him, Officer Douche ended up getting a pretty good plea deal, but he'll never be able to be a police officer or legally own a firearm again, so I considered it a win. His wife filed for divorce for domestic violence while he was awaiting his court date, and thankfully they had no children together, so it was granted without issue, and he has no rights to see her son. He moved away immediately after his hearing, and last I heard, he makes minimum wage working at a gas station somewhere up north. Expert level revenge right here. Kudos. I love when such a high level of revenge comes from you following the rules and staying whiter than white. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.